guys, it's Kathy. How are you? All right, so I got a bunch of little ones today. No great big cases, don't worry. There is one great big case, but instead of making you sit through an hour long probable cause, which is just ridiculous, I just cut out the, the good bits. Oh, and they are good. Let me, let me tell you, they are good. So let's go, let's get going. Uh, Miss Call. Good morning. Um, okay. You are charged with a Class B misdemeanor criminal trespass. Your bail in this case is set at one hundred dollars. Uh, and as a condition of bail, you must stay away from 3132 East uh, State Highway 71, Austin. How much do I bet that's a Walmart? <laughs> Texas being the Valero gas station. Do you nope, have enough wrong. money to hire your own attorney or would you like to request an attorney be appointed to represent you? Pardon? Uh, Ma'am, we aren't here to discuss the facts of the case. I do not hear evidence. I am here to inform you of your rights, your charges, and your bail amounts. Uh, and what I'm asking you now is, can, uh, do you have enough money to hire your own attorney, or would you like to request an attorney be appointed to represent you? Uh, um, I, I don't really, uh, I don't Do you have enough money to hire an attorney? For because I didn't, I didn't really Okay, let, let, let's focus on the question. Do you have enough money to hire an attorney? Uh, perhaps, but I didn't do Okay, anything. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm going to show that you've requested a court appointed attorney. And then if you end up having enough money to, uh, to hire your own attorney, you can at any time, okay? All right. Okay. And I was working with the Justice Force Energy, and so I feel that I was arrested wrongly. Uh, well, you can discuss, you can discuss all that with your attorney. Uh, are you okay. the judge? Pardon? Yes. Are you the judge? Because I feel it's important for you to know that I'm innocent. And also, I've been um, made to... Ma'am, this is not a court where I hear evidence or arguments. So uh, I have uh, explained to you um your charges and uh, your bail amounts um i've shown that you want a court appointed attorney and that's all we can do here this morning okay okay all right thank you i've been thank you i've been threatened to have my memory deleted okay, okay. so i don't remember what happened but i know what happened for seeing my soul that i'm innocent <laughs> well, thank you i'm not just miss uh, dominguez Okay, okay, okay. This one, we're not going to hear a case, but what happens here is wild. I've never seen this happen before. Here we go. All right. The attorney on the first case is not present. Moving on. Attorney and defendant are not present on the second case. Moving on. Wow. Attorney is not present on the third case. Moving Yikes. on. Which one is my fortune, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. So when the judge calls out your name, you can answer. Okay. Courtney, will you check to see if you have received notice from any of these attorneys? Because case number five, the attorney is not present. Oh, my yes, God. sir. I will double check. Judge, you're referring to Elijah Oliver? That four and five on your docket? He's not ignoring no. him. Hold on. Okay. Calm down. He's number six. The attorney's not present.
Have you ever seen this before? All these attorneys just not showing up for court? This is crazy. Show cause, show cause, show cause, show cause. Attorney and defendant are not present on case number eight. Judge number start. 14, Guerra, the bailiff. Yeah, I hear you talk. I see you talking. I'm not hearing you, though. Hold on. Did we lose right. Judge? I was going to say I lost Judge. Can you hear me, Stephanie? I can hear you, but I cannot see Judge now. I can't see Judge either. There you are. Okay. <laughs> All right, Courtney, tell me, has any of these attorneys contacted you? No, sir, but Mr. Martin... Why am I not hearing her? <laughs> I can hear her. It's just you, Judge. Can you hear me? Yes. Judge, can you hear me? Judge isn't hearing us. I heard you for a second. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. That's good. That's that's one of the very important. Things. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now, Judge? Nope. <laughs> can somebody speak? Say Hello, something. Hello, Judge. Can you hear me? I, I don't know what's going on with my system. Hello. I, give Hello. me a minute. Hello. <laughs> Mic check. Mic check. One, two. <laughs> And it's just judge. It was horrible timing for his technical issues because he reboots and he does get back online and he calls out like, you know, two or three more attorneys that just did not show up. But he never, ever, ever said what was going to happen. Like, is he going to show cause them all? Have you ever seen that many attorneys just not show up for court? That was crazy. Yeah, Your Honor, before we get too further in this one, I was never served on this one. Um, so, um, and this is an old case file for a three-day notice. Um, and there's already been responsive pleading, so I don't think he can amend the complaint without leave of the court. So that would be my statement in this one, Your Honor. Right. Ms. Mr. Stevens, can you hear me, sir? So in case you didn't gather, um, I'm, I skipped the first part because it was boring. The one in the middle, Jim Stevens, he put in a motion to amend the complaint, but he's not an attorney. And um, and that's where they're at. The, the, this guy's saying, nah, he, he can't do that. Yes. All right. So I see that it's like on August 29th, there was an amended summons and complaint filed. Correct. So that can only be done after a motion and notice to the other side once there's been a response filed. So it looks like there was a show cause order entered. I assume that was done um, probably with an unawares that that was uh, the situation in the case. So that complaint and show cause would not be valid for today because they haven't been approved prior to being moving forward. So in order to amend a, amend a complaint or a summons, you have to file something with the court, give notice to the other side, and they have a right to object to an amendment because there's been an answer filed and the case is progressing forward. 
So, and I saw there were two cases like that, I believe. Yes. So, well, basically what that means is I can't proceed forward on your case at this time on the on the show cause that was uh, entered August 29th. So I have to inform Mr. Kiernan? You'd have to, Mr. Kiernan's involved in the case, you'd have to give him notice that you want to amend the complaint, set a hearing on that, and then we come back and we determine if that's if that's possible under the under the rules of the case. These are all basic court rules. So I mean, once <laughs> there's been an answer filed, you don't get to just amend your summons and complaint without a leave of the court. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Right. So on the Larson okay. matter, which is twenty three two five twenty six oh eight, I'm going to strike that today. It's already got other. He left. He left. He's out. The judge keeps talking to him for a while. There are things going on. There's a, I think there's a jury trial demand in place. So I, is this, is this bribe to be set under the trial assignment docket council? No, because he's now going under a 14 day notice. So if he were to proceed under that, there wouldn't be, I, I doubt that that would be a tribal issue of fact, as far as a, I haven't seen a 14 day case go to trial yet, your honor. Okay. So. Process-wise, you may want to get some legal advice, sir. I've given you as much as I'm able to do. I'm just simply explaining. I can't proceed forward on what you've got here because I don't have enough. The, the summons and complaint were filed without um, approval. Okay? And there's a second one. I believe you had a second case as well. Um, just a second here. I'll go ahead and deal with that so you're not waiting around. That's on the it's not waiting around, Judge. Two nine zero eight matter with Ryan Barnes, and that's essentially the same set of facts. Uh, there was an amended petition file that needs to go through a process to be done, so I can't proceed forward on that show cause either. All right. Did we lose Mr. Stevens? Yes, a while ago. You may have already stepped out, but that matter will be stricken as well. That's 23252908. Um Marie New uh New Horizons, I believe. I provided her with the information. Okay, this is the one that I took the whole hour long probable cause and just cut out the parts that you're gonna like. So you know. It's choppy. You, we skip a whole bunch of parts in the middle, but it's really boring. Um, the officers get on stand. And it's like, what what were you wearing when you approached the house? And where are your lights on? And who was in front of you? Who was behind you? Where was the table? Where was it's just boring? So here we go. This is not boring though. This is great. I told her that she, she was aware this is an in person examination. And I had indicated at that time <clears throat> that I would ask the court if we were just doing. Um, Ministerial matters, such as, for example, grading exam or something of that ilk, that her probably permit that. Based upon my discussion, she's in the she wishes the examination. I indicated to her that was of uh, difficulty not only for the government but for myself. Anyway, she's provided the Zoom number. Currently, she is now present and can address the question. Um, I guess I would be asking the court to uh, adjourn the matter. Perhaps she can give you the, um, the logistics specifics of her rehabilitation placement. Ma'am, your name on Zoom? Uh, Wendy Knuckle. All right. Ma'am, you're in a facility in Sault Ste. Marie? Correct. How long have you been in that facility? I've been there roughly about a week and a half, roughly. A week and a half. So why are you letting your attorney know today that you're up in that facility? Um, Because well, I had a court, a court date today. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. Why didn't you? Why didn't you let her know a week and a half ago? Um, I I, I don't know. I just I, I I didn't. Um, I did a call the courts, and I believe I called your voice. Ma'am, 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 ma ma stop, stop, stop right there. Um, we have a, a, a courtroom full of witnesses here, and now we're going to have to adjourn this matter because you're not here because you couldn't pick up the phone a week and a half a week and a half ago and call your attorney. I am, I apologize. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Mr. Van Norman, how many witnesses do you have here today? Your Honor, I have three endorsed for exam. You're all present to me. Whether I would use all three or not, I don't know. Um, 
but they are all, are all here. Additionally, Your Honor, I would state in the, in the court uh, records that we will confirm that this is not the first time something like this has happened. Uh, there was another event uh, for counsel here. I'm sorry. The audio is bad on him. I'm sorry, but the rest is really good. Feel free to leave a comment. Call from the rehab facility in Vatican. The other thing, Your Honor, I'm just uh, the rehab facility notwithstanding. Um, I'm just, and, and I, I'm not a technical mm -hmm. expert, so I don't know what the, uh, the distortion might be. The sound system. This is somebody that if she were standing here sounding like that, I would ask the court to consider court testing. Ma'am, what facility are you at? Uh, it's, it's a new new women's hope facility. What is it? Uh, new Hope Women's Facility. New Hope Women's Facility in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan? Correct. And uh, how come we can't see you on video? And how come earlier we were just seeing your feet? I don't know. My, I, know I, I can't figure out how to use this and how to, to flip it around. I'm not very good. Well, but the, is, is there staff there that can help you? Um, yeah, but I'm in a, a room by myself here. Ma'am, are you truly in a facility right now? Yes, Your Honor. We're going to run this prelim right now. Uh, Ma'am, you want a prelim? Um, what is a prelim? Well, that's a hearing where the prosecutor presents witnesses to establish whether or not there's probable cause to believe the crime was committed and probable cause to believe you committed it. It's a relatively low standard. It's not like beyond a reasonable doubt in circuit court. If you had a trial, it's a lower standard of probable cause standard. You can waive that hearing if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to have a hearing, we're going to have a hearing today because we're going to get this matter concluded at least at the district court level. So if you want to have a hearing, we can have one. If you want to want me to leave the bench and you can talk to your attorney for a moment, we can do that. Um, but either way, we're going to resolve this matter today because the witnesses are here and you should have been here. And I'm doubtful about where you're at at this point. All right. Okay. So, uh, we'll say, Hold on, ma'am. The officer did approach me and we've done a little bit of online. There is such a facility in Sioux Ste. Marie. Whether she's there or not. Uh, so, so that the record's clear. Um, Ms. Dokelin, I did have a fairly extensive discussion early this morning when I was notified about the nature of preliminary examination and what the people would have to prove at that hearing. And we talked about some issues which I told her I would be addressing with the prosecutor at a later moment. Um, we, we also discussed the question of waiver exam, understanding that the standard is quite low for purposes of this probable cause hearing. Um, in any event, if, what is your position currently, Ms. Nokel? Do you wish to continue this matter for preliminary examination, or do you wish to waive it upstairs where we can address the concerns that you have? Um, no, I don't want to waive, Your Honor. All right, well then, sit tight, ma'am. We're going to have a preliminary exam today, right now, and okay. you can hear us, correct? Correct. Your Honor, just uh, one other matter. Mm -hmm. In as much as in the courts pointed it out, we've seen nothing but heat and blurry things and, and so on. Um, in the absence of a stipulation to identification, I think there's a problem here. So I'm asking counsel to stipulate, for example, just that the person on on the video, or at least talking on the video, is in fact this defendant. Okay, in case you couldn't hear him, because the audio is bad right there. He's say, the prosecutor is saying, I don't know if that's her. All I see is feet and blurry screens. I want the other counsel to stipulate that that person on this phone is actually her. <laughs> uh, counsel, can you stipulate? As officer of the court, I have not met Ms. Nogo or her feet previous to this appearance. And as officer of the court, I have some concerns about making representations that that is in fact Ms. Nogo. I, I can represent as officer of the court that I believe she in fact did contact. She obviously had 
the wherewithal to contact my office this morning, assuming that's the same person, I could say that I verily believe that that is Ms. Noko for purposes of this proceeding and to move forward. Ma'am, what's your date of birth? 10-30-1983. When we had a local address in Bay City, what was that address, ma'am? Um, 3731 South Lucerne Drive, and that's Bay City, Michigan, 48706. South what? Lucerne. South Lucerne. Was there ever an address that you lived at on West Midland Street in Bay City? Yeah. That's what I was, what was my the newest address, the one I thought I had on file and so on. That's what What, what address was that, ma'am? 401 West Midland Street, Bay City, Michigan, 48706. All right. Was there ever an address that you had on Wilson Street in Bay City? Uh, yeah, it was 1206. All right. Bay City, what was that zip code on Wilson? Um, four eight seven zero eight. All right. All the record. I'm impressed that someone as high as she is right now can remember all of her addresses. It should reflect all three of those addresses for the known defendants. Uh, were just stated by this individual, Lucerne, Wilson, and Midland. Um, and we're going to proceed with the preliminary exam. Very well, Your Honor. So just sit tight, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. And also see if they'll verify that she's there. That might not, but all right, ma'am, hold on. Ma'am, we're going to see if staff up, up there can help you out with the video transmission so that you can be seen on video. All right. Uh, yep. I'm going to, I'm going to get it on here right now and see if I can figure it out. Good. Thank you. Yeah. I did locate uh, uh, some uh, uh, actual narcotics. <clears throat> I just called the facility. They said she's not there. I said, is that because you can't legally I say that? She said, she said, no, we don't have anybody by the oh. yeah. I'm pretty sure you heard her, but just in case you didn't, she said that she just called the facility and they said that she's not there. And she asked them, is that because you can't legally tell me anything? And they're like, no, she's just not here. We need to know. Talk to the person you believe to be the resident of that residence? Yes, I briefly spoke with all members that were there, along with my other colleagues that were there as well, too, along with uh, two members from the uh, state of Michigan were also there for adult protective services. Oh, and uh, when when you responded, uh, were, you, were you with me alone, or did you have a partner or other officers? I had uh, my partner, Deputy uh, Butchinger, Jordan Butchinger, and our uh, patrol sergeant, uh, Christian, was also present as well, too. Just for the record, your partner is the one seated next to you. That is correct. Now, you indicated you observed narcotics. Right? Yes, sir. Um, what what brought that to your attention and where, where did you find it? Uh, it was brought to my attention uh, by Deputy Blickinger because um, I was also in the process of photographing as well, too. My friend located those narcotics in the uh, is to be the master bedroom on I accidentally of left house. some of the trial and um, sorry there was also some other narcotic uh, uh, evidence, evidence of narcotics that was located in the trash can in that same bathroom as well too by myself okay specifically what evidence uh between drug paraphernalia between uh a spoon that uh, appeared to be burnt um a black or brownish tar uh, type substance um and I can't remember what else there was to yeah. and I'm sorry if I missed it. With respect to the narcotics themselves, it was suspected. Were you the one that located? Uh, 
I located, um, I can't remember exactly which portions of it I located. Some were located by Deputy Budinger and or Sergeant Jimmy, and the other, uh, some of, uh, of it was also located by Miles, myself during a secondary search. Okay, the ones that you located were, and, and again, I apologize. Sure. Where were those? The second ones I located, which I believe was a uh, wrapper that had a black tarry looking substance, uh, was located in a trash can, a small little trash can in the master bathroom next to the toilet. Any others? Um, um, not that I can recall at this moment. After you located them, what kind of thing did you do? I photographed them, um, appropriately uh, collected them in evidence, submitted to the evidence for, uh, for our detective bureau to further uh, send the lab to have them examined. Uh, courts previously made findings to the identity of the defendant in the zoo. Uh, did you have occasion to talk to somebody uh, in the meeting? Again, have uh, suspicious. What you heard? Okay. What did you? I uh, ultimately she denied. Did you continue the interrogation? Or she I left way much. I did uh, briefly. This particular defendant that had been assisted with drug use and had been discovered. Um, if you knew who was in the residence with. They were talking too fast. Stop. Oh, Ms. Knuckle, are you still there? Ma'am. I am. I'm here. Okay. Any luck with that video? Um, no, not, not exactly. I think well, it may have a button. I just saw a piece of paper, ma'am. So yeah, that's. I can't, do you want me to flip the camera around? Can you see me now? See, I won't be able to. Yeah, see now you I can see. I can't. I you're upside to... down, but you're upside down. But at least we can see you. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Can you put it back on your face again? Yeah, I don't know. Can you see me now? I can. Okay. Not sure why you're upside down, but at least we can see you. Because my you phone. Yeah. All right. All right. Just hold still for a second. Thank you. Yep. Before we get to uh, cross exam further uh, direct. Thank you, Your Honor. Deputy. Uh, uh, the person that you identified as the first noble you spoke with by the Ms. Knuckle, are you still there? Ma'am? I am. Okay, thank you. Yep. Prosecute, prosecutor just asked for a moment to talk to his investigator, so hold on. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> See how nice the judge is being to her now? You know, once the judge is annoyed with you and then switches to being nice to you, something bad is about to happen to you. All right, next witness then. Thank you. Upon the testimony, the court is going to find at least probable cause to believe the crimes were committed and probable cause to believe that Ms. Knuckle committed them based upon the testimony presented here today. So the matter will be bound over to circuit court for trial or other disposition. Ms. Knuckle, are you there? Ma'am? Yeah. Yes, I hear you, Your Honor. All right, I'm going to give you one more chance now to tell me where you're at right now presently, please. I am at a rehab facility. What's the name of that rehab facility again? Um, I would have to sign you a release. Um, I was at Sault Ste. Marie for about a week and maybe about a week and I left there and I now at another rehab facility. So you told us earlier about a new hope facility in Sault Ste. So Marie, and that's where you're at. Are you yes, at I'm that facility, ma'am? Not right now. Yes. Me, no, no, I'm at another. Where are, where are you? Ma'am, when I asked you earlier where you were, I meant currently. Where are you currently at? Um, Sacred Heart facility. Where's that at? Southfield. So you're not in Sault Ste. Marie at all. I was in Sault Ste. Marie. I believe that under my the, under the medical, I would have to be. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like I I I don't didn't want to. <laughs> no, fully I, no, I don't blood. know what you're saying, ma'am. Ma'am, what you're be... saying is is you're lying to this court. The court is going lying. to issue a bench, ma'am. Stop talking. The court right. is going to enter a bench warrant for your arrest. So if the officers locate you, you will be arrested. You will be held without bond until you uh, uh, appear in front of a circuit judge. This matter is being bound over to circuit court. And 
Um, do you have an address in Southfield where you're located now, ma'am? Uh huh. I don't. Sure. Sacred Heart in Southfield. Well, uh, we're pulling that up. We're not seeing any facility named Sacred Heart in Southfield. And just for the record, ma'am, while the prelim was going on, my staff did contact New Hope in Sault Ste. Marie. They indicated you were not there. So you've not been truthful with the court. I am revoking your bond and issuing a bench warrant. There'll be a hold for you. So if you choose to turn yourself in, that's up to you. If you don't, when we locate you, you will be arrested. Anything further, counsel? Your Honor, while the court was conducting that discussion, uh, Officer Bonnet or Deputy Bonington did a little bit of Google type research. There wasn't a sacred heart in Southfield. There was one warrant. Um, having been an Oakland County native, Sacred Hearts is name I'm familiar with in a lot of places, so it may be, may or may not be the case. Which is a class. I really, really think that um, they sent um, officers to the trailer. So she's busted for elder abuse and narcotics. So she was living in a trailer with, with an older gentleman. And, you know, I, she must have hit him or, or done something. And when they went to arrest her, they found a whole bunch of drugs and stuff. Um, so I think that they sent officers to that trailer while court was going on to pick her up while we were in court. And, and I was hoping that, you know, they would get there, but it, it looks like she's not at the trailer. She's somewhere else. So we, we didn't get to see her arrested, but I think they did try. I think they did try. All right, on to this guy who's perfectly honest because I think every every single person that goes in front of the judge feels the same way he does. Class B misdemeanor punishable by up to six months in the county jail and a fine of up to $1,000. These are all maximum penalties. And uh, if you would be uh, convicted of any or all of these, you could be uh, sentenced to serve these concurrently, which means you'd serve the sentences all at once or consecutively, which means you'd serve one sentence and then um, begin the next sentence. Do you understand what you've been charged with and the possible penalties? No, sir, Your Honor. Do you understand what you've been charged with? No, sir. Do you want me to go over these again? No, sir. Okay, these are only allegations. You have the right to have a trial on this matter where the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you committed these offenses and you have the right to defend yourself in court and challenge that evidence. You also have the right to uh, legal counsel and if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. Do you understand those rights? I'm sure I don't. All right, um, Mr. Richa, do you have any recommendations on for Mr. Uh, Holt? I suppose, Your Honor, if Mr. Holt doesn't understand anything in the proceedings today, he needs a, an attorney appointed to him so we can explore options as concerning whether he can understand things or whether we need to pursue other options or his inability to understand uh, things in, in mental health treatment. So I would suggest that uh, um, an attorney be appointed and, and we set this for a status. All right. I felt bad for him, but he was honest. I don't understand what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. I got arrested. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm arrested. Now you're asking me all these stupid questions. <laughs> Leave me alone. All right. Good morning, ma'am. Can you state your name for me? Can you hear me, ma'am? I can't say my name. Can you say, say I, the audio didn't pick it up? Uh, I can't, can't no. say her name. Oh, All right, deputies, can you tell me who this is? This defendant is Miss Phillips. Queen Phillips. No, that's correct, Your Honor. Queen Phillips. All right, Queen Phillips, you have been charged with loitering or prowling. That bond amount is $1,000. That comes with a special condition that while out on bond, you are not to return to this location at 4853 Jonesboro Road in Forest Park. Walmart. Uh, I'm going to schedule your preliminary hearing for October the 10th at 830 a.m. Uh, those hearings are held over the computer just like this one. 
And do you want a uh, public defender to represent you? Uh, you can do. Do you do want a public defender to represent you? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. This is a waste of my time. Would you like a public defender to try to help you with this? All right, I'm going to appoint a public defender to represent you. Okay. All right. That'll take care of everything, ma'am. Thank you. This is a waste of my time. Yes. Ms. DeLon, you're charged with a Class B misdemeanor, silent or abusive 911 calls. Your bond amount set at $500. You're not going to get a personal bond based on the nature of the cases. I set your bond low because I know you're broke, but uh, I'm not comfortable doing a personal bond based upon the particular allegations involved in this case and your uh, and your criminal history. So you're going to need to either have someone come down to the jail with $500 cash, in which case if you show up for all your court dates, you'll get your money back at the end of the case, or you can go through a bail bondsman or a lawyer. Uh, and do you want a court appointed attorney or do you want to hire your own lawyer? I have a question for you. I've been put through prisoner abuse with cases against me in the last three, four years here when I was not guilty of them. I was abused by the people who were incarcerated here. I had false reports made and abused by people who were employed by Travis County. I was had my rights violated by Jackson Gorski, who is a court appointed attorney. Well, I tell you what, I can't. And I, I need, and I, re, I want to, and I'm not guilty of the charge. Okay. Well, and I'm a regret. If I have no way to pay the bond, and I'm sitting through even so much prison abuse by the inmates and the people who are employed by Travis County, and, and the court appointed attorney whose name is Jackson Gorski, I've been found guilty of charges when I was not guilty of them, when he was appointed as my court appointed attorney. I'm requesting him not to I'll be tell you what. I tell you what, I'm going to, uh, would you, would you like another, a different court appointed attorney? Yes, I'm requesting that he never be assigned as a court appointed attorney for me. I'm not guilty of the charge. And if I start talking about what happened, no, nobody's going to help me. You're basing everything on my past history. I've been brought here when I wasn't even guilty of the charges and put through horrendous prisoner abuse. And some of that was recent when I couldn't, I was attacked by people who were incarcerated here. I was abused by the people who were employed here by Travis County. Well, I, I can I, tell you what, you can talk to your talk to your lawyer about that, and you can also file a complaint with the Travis County Sheriff's Office and with the police department. And you're certainly welcome to do those. I can't speak to those things. I don't have any personal knowledge of those. What I can tell you is that you've been arrested over 30 times in, in <laughs> six different states, and including multiple times here in Travis County, including this same exact type of charge just back in February. And uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, February, February. Uh, February and oh, then in March of the previous about. year. That's when I was put through three months of prisoner abuse, and that was this month. It never went into a courtroom. I had to put up with three months of abuse from people who were employed here. Well, talk to your lawyer. I'm going to indicate that you don't want the same attorney, and your I'm attorney. I'm him never to be appointed, as he is and biased for me. Well, you can file a complaint with the State Bar of Texas if you like. I wasn't able to do that. I don't have money or time to do that. I'm requesting that Jackson Gorski never be appointed as an attorney, court-appointed attorney for me. Okay. He violated my laws against me multiple times when I was unable to speak up for myself in a courtroom. I was not, it, it didn't even go into a courtroom the last case. I wasn't even guilty of it. I sat through prisoner abuse for three months. Okay. It's not well, legal. Listen, there is a process to file a complaint. And I, I'm able, unable to file a complaint while I'm incarcerated. They, I, I'm being abused by people who are employed here. I'm going to make sure you're, con you're, you're represented by someone else. And I want okay, you to how talk long to them can I be held here them? without being brought to a courtroom? When you have people who are employed here, block me from even showing up at court based on lies and false reports about me. And you have them employed at this jail right now. Well, talk to your lawyer about it. I'm not going to get in any further into this matter. 
How well, long can I be held here without going to court and being released on this? When I'm not even guilty of the charge. Your first court date's going to be in the next in the next few days. In the next week, you'll at, at a minimum you'll be brought for, for your first court date. Your court appointed attorney will be assigned to you by the end of the day tomorrow. They will reach out to you in the next couple of days, and they can come talk to me or one of the other judges about trying to get you out on a personal bond. I've already they have to also you. speak to me legally. I have a right to speak to them. I've had people who are employed here deny me access to attorneys. That's well, illegal. I've been have experience of you know, from people who are. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a court appointed attorney assigned to you to try to help you out, and they can come talk to me about it. I'll remember. Huh? Okay. Have your attorney come talk to me about it. I'll listen. <laughs> From from you too, uh, Your Honor. You hear me? That's right. You're in trouble, Your Honor. You should be scared. Right now, by somebody who's employed here, and I'm reporting her as abusive towards me. <laughs> okay. All right, Tristan Simeon. Right. <laughs> well, there you go. There's a couple of cases. Whoops. I'm sorry about the uh, the. Oh man, why do I keep doing that? Oh, I can't fix it. So the reason that keeps happening is because I have a touchpad. And if I touch the, the touchpad anywhere when my mouse is outside of that box, it breaks that box away. <laughs> then I, you get to see my, my folder. But yeah, those were just some good ones that, that I saw um, over the last couple of days. It was slim pickings. The, the people have been... Um, horrendous crimes, horrendous, but they haven't been, you know, nothing that I would want to post on here. So, you know, I've just been watching court videos that are real court or they have all attorneys that are doing their jobs, which, which is stupid. I just like it when the, the attorneys fight. <laughs> it's like people only watch hockey for the fights. I watch court fights. Anyway, um, I do want to tell you Judge Mansfield who had a day the last time I posted a video with those two attorneys. She has not been in front of those two attorneys yet again. So I couldn't get any, any content. But what I noticed is she hasn't been in front of any attorneys since then, um, except for a very small clip. The court cases that she has been doing the last couple of days are just traffic violations so that no attorney is needed. Like, hardly anyone ever brings an attorney with them. So it's just the people and the judge. So I think she's like, that's it. I've had it with the attorneys. I'm not going to do that. Put me on this docket for a couple of days. So hopefully she gets back to normal. We can see how those two attorneys do, do in her courtroom after, after this week, which was just, just horrible. They were just horrible. All right, guys, that's everything. I hope you guys have a great night. See ya.